Hey, what's up guys? It's Crimson Knight. Today, I'll be showing you guys a tier list to see who is the best hero for the last hero standing, a 1v1v1 game mode. So today, I've got something for you guys that I don't believe has been done before. Since this game mode is so new, I want to show you a tier list of who is the best hero for the last hero standing, a 1v1v1 game mode. Let's get to it. Alright, there will be 5 major things I will be looking out for to see what makes a good hero for this game mode and what does not. First, how far is their attack reach when they swing. Second, how much damage they can deal out. Third, how much damage they can take. Fourth, how fast they can get into a fight. And lastly, in number five, how well they can defend against two people at once. So guys, let's start off with the best faction, the Knights. I'm gonna start off strong with Warden. I'm gonna put Warden as a class A hero for a few reasons. One, his dash forward attack. He can switch his shoulder bash to who he wants to hit. He's got a very good zone attack. His attack and defense is there. I would say he's an extremely good duelist, and I would say he would be very good for this game mode. Let's look at Peacekeeper. I think we can agree that she would be a terrible hero for this game mode. She's quick and fast, yeah, but this game mode, you need to be defensive and patient. She has a good zone attack, but still her reach is not very good, which is why I put her as a D-class hero. Let's get to Centurion now. I'll be honest, this is not very easy, but I had to put him as a class C hero. I put him as a class C hero because a lot of his moves depend on pinning and throwing against walls. It's hard to focus all your attention on one opponent in this game mode, which is why I had to put him where I did. Let's talk about Black Prior. So Black Prior isn't able to get to other opponents very easily, but where he lacks in his reach, he makes up for his defense and counter attacks capabilities. His ball work stance is by far the best defense in the entire game, so I would put Black Prior as an S tier hero for this game mode. We have Griffin, and for him I would put him as a class A hero. He has extremely good damage, good defense and simple basic attacks with a long ranged weapon. So overall he would be a very good hero for this game mode. So for Conqueror I think some of you would be surprised by this but I'm going to put him as a class B hero because of his defense capabilities and because he can throw lots of shield bashes and unblockable which he can cancel and that can mess up both opponents much easier. Now to the law itself. So for Lawbringer, I would have to put him as an S-class hero. It's for a few reasons. His counterattacks, his attack range, damage, and health. Overall, he would be a very good hero for this game mode. Now on to Gladiator. I would have to put him as a C-class hero. I would have put him lower, but he can jump into a fight very easily. But also, his toe stab, which is hard enough to react to in 1v1s, I would say it's almost impossible to react in this game mode, and it's just fast enough that you shouldn't be punished for it. Now for Warmonger, I would have to put her as a class A hero. Her range, her dodge unblockables, her undodgeable attacks, her dash abilities to get into a fight is very strong, which is why I put her where I did. I would say the best hero for the Knights faction for the last hero standing would have to be Black Prior. You just can't get past his defense in a 1v1v1 situation. Alright, now I'm excited for the Vikings faction, let's head on over. First we're going to start with Raider. I'm going to put Raider as an A class hero, mostly because of his hyper armor and his attack range. He can throw out a lot of damage and can take a lot of attacks overall, he would be a very good hero for this game mode. Okay, now we're on to Berserker. I know all you Berserker fans are freaking out, but calm down. I'm going to put Berserker as an S class hero, mostly because of his quick, agile speed and his dash range attacks. Also, he's got very good hyper armor and a crazy amount of attacks. He can just go against multiple opponents very easily, which is why I have to put him as an S class hero. So for Highlander, I'm going to make him a class A hero. I put him as a class A hero because he does a lot of damage and has a long range but a lot of his unblockable attacks can be stopped with an attack which makes him not so useful in this game mode because you can be hit by a separate opponent which could stop you. 
Now with Jormungandr, I would have to put him as a C-class hero, because he can knock down heroes when he hits them with his bash, but that won't be super helpful when you are going against two people at once. So for Warlord, he's got a great defense and decent attacks, but that's really all he's got. He doesn't have a great reach, so for that I'd have to put him as a class C hero. Alright, let's go to Valkyrie. So she would be good for this game mode because of her defensive capabilities and her reach and dash abilities, but her health and overall damage isn't super strong, which is why I'm going to put her as a class B hero. So for Shaman, the little devil herself, I'd have to put her as a class D hero. I would have put her higher because of her dash attacks, but she really relies on her bleeding attacks and her pounce attacks, which won't be very useful in this game mode, because another opponent can just hit you while you use it. Alright, finally for the last and newest hero for the Viking faction, we've got the Varian Guard, and I would have to put her as a class B hero, mostly because of her defense and her hit range, but overall, she's very basic and can get hit a lot while trying to focus on one opponent. But the best hero in the Vikings faction would have to be Berserker. Alright guys, let's get to the Weeb faction. Nah, I'm just playing. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Nah, it's a good faction. Okay, let's start off with Kensei. So for Kensei, I'm going to put him as a class A hero for a few reasons. His dash abilities, his dodge attacks, but most of all, his attack reach, which is extremely strong. Alright now. Let's get to Orochi. So for Orochi, I'd have to say he's got a good dashing abilities and good speed, but his damage and health just is not there. So I have to put him as a class C hero. So for Shinobi, I mean he's good in duels, but for this game mode, he really doesn't have much at all. His health stinks, he can be hit out of his attacks a lot, so for this style of game mode, he just isn't made for at all. So I have to put him as a class D hero. So for Hidekiri, I hate putting him here, but I'd have to put him as an S-Class hero, and that's all because of his damage, health, his sweep ability, but most of all his extremely good hyper armor. Alright, now we got the fat man himself. So for Shigoki, I'd have to put him as an S-Class hero, and that's because of his insane damage, health, and hyper armor, but also his reach is extremely far, so that's why I put him as an S-Class hero. So for Nobushi, I would put her as a class D hero, mostly because she doesn't have a good dash. Yes, she can keep her opponents away with her attack reach, but her health isn't very good, which is why I put her where I did. So Aramusha, I would put him as a class B hero. He's got good defense and offense, but his reach is lacking a lot, and his health is not there. He's definitely better for 1v1s, just not for this game mode. So for Kyoshin, Kind of the same thing, he doesn't have very good health or reach. His attacks and defense are decent, but he just can't compete with some of these other heroes, which is why I had to put him as a class B hero. I would say the best hero for the samurai faction would be Hidekiri, but honestly it's very close with him and Shigoki. Alright, now we are done with the samurai faction, let's get to the Wulin. So first for Tiandi, I definitely have to say he's a B class hero. He's got very good attacks. His defense is okay, but the best thing he really has is his reach and dodging abilities. But other than that, his health is really, really bad. So I would definitely have to put him as a class B hero. So for Nusha, I would have to say she is a D class hero, mostly because of her low health and short range attacks. She just really isn't too good for this game mode. Now for Zanhu, I would have to put him as a class C hero mostly because of his attack reach, but he also has a lot of unblockable attacks, which could be useful to mess up both opponents. So for Jang Jun, I would put him as a class B hero. He's got very good damage, defense, and health, not to mention his reach is very good. He would be very good for this game mode. So lastly for the Wulin faction, we have the Shaolin. I would put him as a class C hero. He's very quick and agile, but he lacks health and attack damage, which is why I put him where I did. I would say the best hero for the Wulin faction would have to be Zhang Jun. He's just superior than the other Wulin faction. Let's head over to the Outlanders. Alright, so first we got the Pirate. He's not terrible for this game mode, but he just doesn't have anything too unique for this type of fighting. So for that, I would have to put him as a class C hero. Now we're on to Afera. 
For Afira, I would have to say she is very good with her reach and dodging abilities, but her attack and health is just low, which is why I'm going to put her as a B class hero. Alright, now we're on to Medjay. I've got to say, he has to be one of the best heroes for this game mode, especially with his new rework. He just got his attack damage and defense, and reach, and health are all really strong, which is why I have to put him as a S class hero. For the last hero in this list, we have Ocelotl. He has good attacks and great reach. He doesn't have very good health, but can get into a fight and out of one very easily, so I'm going to make him a class A hero. The best hero for the Outlanders faction would have to be Medjay. He's just superior than them in every way. Now to rank who is the best class hero for the S tier list. I would have to say it's very close to Black Prior and Medjay. But as I said in the beginning, it's really about defense and patience, which is why I have to put Black Prior as the number one 1v1v1 hero for the game mode last hero standing. And that sums up the entire tier list. I want to hear from all you guys who you think is the best hero for this game mode and why. This is just my opinion and I had a lot of fun making this. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.